Today's topic is how to market your gym online in 2024. And obviously, marketing is vitally important if you want to get clients and grow your business. And James, we've built a sort of a framework for people to follow. Do you want to give us the, the outline of the framework first and then we can dive into each piece a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So no matter what business you're in, whether it's personal training, osteopathy, chiropractor, physical therapy or owning a gym, we've got to look at this new framework of marketing in 2024 where it's all about being helpful. I think that's that's let's talk about that first. It's about being helpful in 2024 because everyone's trying to push and do the hard sales everywhere. So what what we need to think about is being helpful and being helpful starts on Google, essentially, because that's why people search for stuff when they're looking for answers for questions. So our framework is very simple. We've got to look at your website. If, have you got a website that's fast loading that can get found in Google and it offers a clear, actionable advice to help people with the questions they have? For example, best gyms in your city, right? Do you have any topics about that to share case and showcase maybe the fact that why your gym is one of the best in town? Because people ask that question or other questions like, you know, weight loss tips, all these sorts of things, right? In your local town. So you've got to be helpful. Have a web- website that's helpful, that provides information, but has clear a clear client avatar of who you're trying to attract on it as well. It's fast loading that Google loves. That's the first basic thing here, which then ties into the blog post section where to be able to rank and get high, you've got to have blog posts and content to show and prove to Google that you're a worthwhile entity and you're a worthwhile business. So you need a few blog posts on there to just give value and give this expertise and authority to give Google a very good reason why they should rank you. Now, the third thing is like Google ads. Fourth thing is then social media. And then the fifth thing is then running paid ads with social media on top of it. There's a reason we're having this framework in place with the websites first, because that's the pillar, that's the infrastructure for your whole business. If you don't know who you're serving and what you're doing, and you give a professional uh, look to your business, right? And that authority I keep talking about, you're never, you're never going to have everything else dialed in at all. So it's like the website's the, the pillar, the helpful content is, is the second bit. And then we can start doing ads, Google ads being one, which is quick and easy and simple to do. And then we do the social media stuff, which is much harder and much more labor intensive. So that's a very quick rundown of the framework. Yeah, cool. Let's dive into the website then. What makes a good website? What makes a bad website? <laughs> you can... <sighs> Great question. A bad website is a website that doesn't have a clear message of the person you're trying to attract and having a clear client avatar and a call to action. So in three seconds or less, when someone lands on your website for the first time, they need to know who you are, what do you do, and what do I do next? Most people do not have this nailed down. I'll give an example. Uh, Samantha Attad, we're working with her closely at the moment. She's an Ayurvedic practitioner. I think I've said that right. I keep getting it wrong all the time. Most people won't have a clue what that is, by the way. No, I, I didn't either. I, I didn't either. But on her initial website, it was a case of, well, actually, hang on, what is this? I don't know what you do. And I said that to her over the phone. Whereas now I know she's specialising in helping, helping women overcome PS, PMS and period pain relief naturally. So that's the clear message we have on her website, for example. So if you're a gym, who do you target? Who do you help? Well, who do you want coming into your gym? Because there's different types of gyms. So that's the first thing, it's having a clear message. A bad website also has something where you don't know how to book in or take the next steps. That's essentially what it is. There's a lot more technical stuff I can talk about, but you can get away with the technical stuff if you have a really good, clear message and good action steps of what to do next. And you've got to then, in the next framework, is the blog post is, when people first land in it, they're going to have a look at it. Think about your journey when you're trying to find out information about a new company. What do you do? You stick around their website. You're going to find some more information, read a little bit before you then make the decision for the next action. So you want to have this content on there that's useful, or helpful, that answers questions and leads people to the next steps. That's a good website, in my opinion. Andrew, uh, obviously you've worked with a lot of trainers and gyms over the years. What, uh, what are you looking for from a website? Uh, exactly what James says, and I, I look at it of the who, what, why, and how. Um, you know who you are, uh, and who are your uh, target clients, because then the message you're um, relaying through your website and through all of your marketing content that you look to produce is speaking directly to that individual. Then, and no matter what that marketing material would be, in this instance, a website. 
they're getting drawn in uh, and they're nodding their head essentially as they read each line because you're speaking directly to them. You're addressing the problems that, uh, or obstacles that they're, they're looking to overcome. And so they're becoming intrigued. You're building an element of trust and you're guiding them along the journey, showcasing that you understand the pain that they're, they're uh, currently um, experiencing. But equally, you, um, you've got a tried and tested approach on how you help them overcome that. Uh, and that's the how piece. And as James says, then we're just guiding them down the page to ultimately um, lead into a call to action. That could be a strategy call or it could be um, um, accessing a consultation or whatever that might be. Yeah, fantastic. James, the next piece of the framework is that blogging content yeah blog posts blogging and content because when people land on your website they want to find out some more information particularly if they're new and you've always got to assume that they don't know anything about you at all so they have certain questions they're looking for so most of the time if they're looking for gym marketing guess what they're going to be typing into google best gyms near me best gyms in county best gyms in state best gyms in my town that type of thing so you want to be helpful and say well you know explain maybe write a blog post maybe about who are the best gyms in town you obviously put yourself in there but explain why you're the best for a specific niche and specific market and then you can happily tell and share other competitors in there because they may be a completely different demographic and you can do it because you want to be helpful so by coming across as being helpful you're answering their questions they're getting more buy-in and it's all about this idea of being helpful so 2024 in all marketing be freaking helpful right less of the sales less of the pushy be helpful and let them like understand who you are and what you're doing so that's the type of thing here now most people that we should do a separate podcast about this write blogs all wrong they do they go about blog writing for themselves instead of thinking and putting themselves in what are the questions i should be answering to get found in google in the first place so it's about finding out what questions your clients have particularly new ones right and also your current clients to bring this mix of this idea of bringing them to your website which then creates more traffic to your website, which then gives Google going, ah, this, cool, this website's pretty cool, let's rank it even higher. So that's the idea behind the blogging. It's answering questions, being helpful, but it's sending signals to Google to show intent and show you a good authoritative ex ex expert in your field. And also you have trust, basically, and they can trust you. And that gets you ranked higher in Google, right, if you do all that? It does. It, it, there's loads of other factors that help you rank higher. That's a very simplistic overview, but it's a big part of the strategy. Yeah, absolutely. I was gonna say we should definitely do a podcast about that because I think trainers listening, gym owners listening, thinking like, oh my God, I've got to do blogs. Where do I start? What do I do? Uh, and obviously we have a lot of experience with that and we can certainly help. Okay, the next uh, next pillar, is that going to ads now? Yes, Google ads. So people may be saying, well, why not Facebook ads or meta ads? Google, Google rather than Facebook. We've got to start yes. with Google, right? Okay. Yeah, 100%, you start with Google. Okay. Why do we need to start with Google? Yeah, great question. It's because it's easier, it's simpler, it is the fastest way to do and get people potentially to see eyeballs on your place as opposed to Facebook and Meta ads. Now, you gotta think yourself, as a gym owner, as a fitness professional, how much time do you have, right? There's a lot of time and effort going into creating videos, creating social media posts, checking Facebook. There's a lot of stuff going on, on in play here. Now, whereas, as opposed to Google Ads, if you have a website and you have some blog content, you can go into Google Ads and you can say, hey, best gym near me in this, in this position in town, you all these sorts of things you can just add on. It's basically pay-per-click advertising. It's quick, it's easier to set up, and it's almost done and forgotten. So it's giving you time to go back into it. But remember this, you're probably not gonna spend that much money if you get it right, because most people don't click on the Google ad anymore. If you think about it, you see sponsored ads at the top, right? Less than 2% of people click these ads. So what are you thinking, why am I doing this? Well, guess what? By having an ad on here, it's showing you top of Google, maybe appearing in the Google map pack, and then showing top of Google here, it gives you three bits of real estate when people are searching for you. Guess what that gives? It goes, wow, this gym must be pretty cool. This gym must be really, really good. It's, it's appearing everywhere. So it wants people to click in and learn more. So it's a, it's a strategy play to get you found at the top. Yes, people will, some people will click it, but most people don't. In fact, 98% of people don't click on it anymore. But it's easy to set up. You can get found at the right place when people are searching for gym near me. For example, it'll appear in either the Google Map Pack, the, the, click, the pay per click thing at the top in the AdWords, and also if you have everything else in play, it'll come into state, into interstate and go, right, this is 
an authoritative gym. I want to check this guy, these guys out, basically. Okay, and, and, and Andrew, I'm going to throw this one over to you then. Um, James is saying 98% of people don't k- click Google ads, and I'm actually trying to sit here thinking when the last time have I ever clicked a Google ad. I don't know. So I- in your experience, is it worth having if you are still more likely to click on the map pack uh, and you know, if, as long as you are first or second in Google? Would you say, what's your opinion? Um, James is absolutely correct. We're, we're looking to get, we're looking to dominate our area essentially, and this is, uh, in, in this instance, in this example, our, our, our area is not our physical location per se. It's um, on on the Google um, search results page. But as James says, if we're appearing at the top with uh, the with the ad, we're appearing in the map pack, and in that map pack, we're showing that we've got. A significant number of five-star reviews and then we appear uh, a number of times in the um, organic uh, search results uh, element with our home page and perhaps some of our um, uh, blog posts or content pages that are relevant to the term that the person searched for then we're dominating that page and it becomes um, abundantly clear that, um, that they, we deserve further investigation um, into whether or not we, uh, we serve that particular client. But um, I can't remember the exact numbers, but th- when you're appearing on that first page, the first position generates, James, you might know this, uh, certainly 70% of people searching, and then second place is, is maybe something like 30%, and then third is... is 76 percent of the search traffic goes to number one and by the time you get to position 10 on the first page it goes down to less than two percent so it's key <laughs> it's key okay so there you go you've got to rank higher in google absolutely key to rank higher in google what is the james back to you what is the final piece of the puzzle well two more pieces of the final of, of the puzzle actually you've got yeah, you got so you got then you got social media and this is organic social media. So what I what I see all the time is everyone spends so much time trying to invest in posting daily or posting on social media. But the problem is they've got nowhere to drive them back to. Right? So you're just creating this mess of like just relying on social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, where, wherever you're using. You're relying on this. Well, the, so the purpose of social media is to make people aware you exist and to drive them to somewhere else. But it should be your website to learn more and build this overall impression, this professional image of you and your gym. So we've got to think of this in terms of like, once you have the time, once you have the basis and you have money coming into your gym, right? Because you've done all the hard work and the hard graft at the bottom. We're then now layering the social media on top of it because we want to drive traffic to that website because the website should now be working and focus on getting you leads and, sh- and booking in calls to get people coming into your gym. So the reason we put social media at the, the higher end of the spectrum, yes, it's important and you should run it alongside everything else you're doing, but it shouldn't be the focus until we've got everything in the basics in play first because it takes a lot of time. If you really want to dominate and like be, uh, be top of mind everywhere, you should be posting twice a day on your feeds and you should be posting at least four to six times on your stories a day if you want to be specific. Who has the time to that unless they have a full-time dedicated team? So... This is why we're focusing on the basics first, getting some money into the business to help start building this team to then think about the social media strategy. And the final piece on top of that is the Facebook ads or the meta ads or the TikTok ads to try and drive people into your business from the top end. Because without a strategy, without knowing what you're posting and how you're posting, there's no point in doing the ads because you're just, you're just guessing, basically. And you don't know what's going to resonate with your audience and what people like. So the organic stuff, we're testing the waters before we go to Facebook ads. Yes, absolutely, we can get there quite quickly if we know what's working already. But sometimes it takes a month or so for people to get used to posting or understanding it because you want to do the organic plus the ad strategy to get found. And that's the full framework of, I'd say, how to market your gym online in 2024. We're having the basics in play, the grounding in place. Are you found in Google? Do you have a website? You know, are you writing blogs and simple blogs to ask and answer questions that you, your clients have to create engagement and interaction and create the sticky feeling on your website to give Google the idea that you're a trusting person, you're, you're a trusted business, and they want to send people to you. Then we do the Google ads, then we do the organic social media, and then finally we lay it on the icing on the cake is the Facebook ads, which is the rocket fuel to your fire, essentially. And 
Fantastic. Any final thoughts uh, before we wrap up, guys? Only that um, it's alien, this approach to a lot of uh, fitness professionals out there because, you know, they see so many ads put, um, directing them to do the social uh, media advertising first out the gate. Uh, whereas we've seen and we've, we're proving now with our clients that if we get the foundational pieces in place following this framework, it sets you up for greater success in the future. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. That is it for today. Please don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. Uh, and if you're sitting there thinking, do I have a good website? How do I know? And you want to get yourself a free website audit, go to strengthmatters.com forward slash audit.